Chris Sewell here, baseball card collector, investor, dealer in that order. Welcome to The Good Stuff, High Rollers Vintage Edition, and it's basically Vintage Edition because we're looking at the latest Leland's auction, and they are heavy uh, vintage auction house, and this week is no exception. This week's list is brought to you by Hoodies Collectibles, and instead of the normal pitch, I'm going to read to you from a viewer of the channel. This was sent to by Brian, who wrote, Hello, Chris. It was nice to speak to you at the Chantilly Card Show. I talked to you about using hoodies for selling some of my cards, and I wanted to thank you for the recommendation. My sales are complete now, and the whole process went very smooth. I sold some of my lesser-valued doubles and a 2020 Diamond Icons 1 of 1 Jackie Robinson card. I tried to sell that card at a card show, but no one gave me an offer since they couldn't find a comp. I personally don't like trying to sell cards and haggling prices. I feel extremely awkward with the whole process. I also don't have an eBay account, so trying to sell this on eBay would have been a hassle, and I don't think I would have gotten that great a return. So your hoodies recommend, uh, recommendation fit my situation perfectly. They took some great picks on my cards and got a lot more eyes on my cards than I could have. I used the funds from these sales to buy my first real Jackie Robinson card, and I'm extremely happy with how everything worked out. Thank you, Brian, for sharing your story, and I thank Hoodies for sponsoring this week's High Rollers. Looking at the 10 highest sports card sales from the latest Leland's auction, which ended on April 22nd, 2023. But before we check out the top 10, let's look at some honorable mentions. And this week, we're going to focus on uh, memorabilia for the honorable mentions. Not something I do often. We don't really look at memorabilia much on the channel here. But this auction had a lot of great memorabilia. It had some great cards, too, but some uh, really interesting stuff. Thought we'd run through some here. A Walter Johnson autographed baseball. This was a new all-time record sale for any Walter Johnson autographed card, uh, autographed item. Three hundred and fifteen thousand dollars. It's graded a PSA uh, uh, near mint mint eight. Another autographed baseball. This was the nineteen nineteen World Champions uh, Cincinnati Reds. A, a team signed ball. It's authenticated by JSA. There's two Hall of Famers on here. One for forty seven thousand dollars. You can see the ball is uh, pretty beat up there. How about this historic item, a letter from Jacob Rupert regarding the sale of Babe Ruth from the Boston Red Sox to the New York Yankees on December 26, 1919 for $300,000, uh, one of Jacob's bigger mistakes of his life. This letter went for $56,000 plus. Uh, a game used ticket stub from the 1955 Major League debut game of Roberto Clemente. It's graded PSA VGEX 4 and is the only known copy of a, of a ticket stub from this game uh, known to exist, $121,000. How about this really cool item? A photograph with four autographs of the great, of four great Yankee catchers, Bill Dickey, Yogi Berra, Elston Howard, and Thurman Munson. Dickey and uh, Berra are both in the Hall of Fame. Thurman Munson, of course, passed away at a very young age in a plane crash, so getting the four uh, autographs here on one item, I can't imagine there's many items that exist with all four of these, $17,000 plus. A 2016 Chicago Cubs World Series ring. This was given to Aroldis Chapman for being a member of the World Series winning Cubs that year. $30,000 plus. How about a Pete Rose original limited edition silkscreen drawing by Andy Warhol, the famous uh, artist Andy Warhol, meant to mimic the 1985 Topps card design. It is uh, autographed by both Pete Rose and Andy Warhol. has a uh, limited print run of just $50,000. $48,000. I'm going to game used jersey from 2017 of LeBron James with the Cleveland Cavaliers. This was in the game when he passed Kobe Bryant for the youngest player to 28,000 points. That's sort of a random uh, benchmark there, but still impressive game used jersey. Over, uh, over into six figures, $101,589. Play a change person for an extra 60 cents on top of that. And a 1991 Pittsburgh Penguins Stanley Cup championship ring. This was given to Phil Bork and went for $67,000 plus. All right, but on to cards. Let's check out the top 10 high sports card sales from the auction. And kicking off at number 10 is 1965 Tops, number 122, Joe Namath rookie. Uh, Broadway Joe, it's graded a PSA near mint 7. And from the uh, from the front, a little bit off-center left to right, but nothing else really to uh, point to. Back looks extremely clean. Just from here, I'd say uh, the card uh, you know presents maybe a little bit better than a 7. But again, it might be something the pictures aren't picking up. Sold for $12,741.60. And I should mention, all the prices you see here include the buyer's premium. So the hammer price was a little lower than this, but this is what the buyer is paying for, uh, out of pocket to own this card. Uh, the sale's um, pretty pretty standard. There actually has not been a PSA 7 sale in over six months. If you average uh, the five sales from 2022, is about 14000 So maybe the price is a little bit low if you think of it that way, but again, no real recent sales to, uh, to compare it to. The card is a PSA Pop 180 and there are roughly 100 copies graded higher. No PSA 10s exist. Number 9, 1948 Swell Sports Thrills Complete Set. It's a 20-card set. 
Every card is graded by PSA or SGC. Uh, loaded with Hall of Famers, you got DiMaggio, Lou Gehrig, Walter Johnson, and the all-important Jackie Robinson, uh, Jackie Robinson there in the middle, which is graded in SGC EX5. That is Robinson's rookie year. This set sold for $15,458.40. Very, very rare sort of oddball item here. The uh, Just to give you an idea, the Jackie Robinson card has only been graded a total of about 200 times by PSA and only about 100 times by SGC, so not a lot of complete sets out there to chase down. Number 8, 2000 Bowman Gold, number 236, Tom Brady Rookie. Graded BGS Near Mint plus 7.5 with very strong subgrades for the grade uh, seven for corners is the only, uh, or I guess, the biggest problem, we'll say. The Bowman Gold that year uh, was serial numbered out of 99. Very rare parallel uh, of this Tom Brady rookie. Sold for $16,413.60. This sale has well, there's only been one other sale ever of a BGS 7.5. That was about six months ago, and it went for basically double this. went for 32000 so you could say the sale is quite low compared to that, or maybe that one was particularly high. Uh, again, that's sort of the only other 7.5 sale ever to go off of. The card is great as a uh, BGS Pop 2, and there are only 28 copies graded higher, none higher than a 9. Number 7, 1951 Bowman, number 253, Mickey Mantle Rookie, graded a PSA EX5. It looks like a pretty strong 5, a little bit off-centered in both directions, but uh, not really much else going on. Uh, maybe slightly tipped corners, but really, I'd say a, a, a very crisp image, a nice looking 5, and the back looks very clean as well. Sold for $24,819.60. The sale is pretty standard. The average of uh, recent sales of a PSA 5 is 25000 So this uh, sort of lands right where you might expect. The card is a PSA Pop 288, and there are about 450 copies or so graded higher, including one and only one PSA Gem Mint 10. Number 6, 1928 Exhibits, Lou Gehrig. The card is autographed. It's graded PSA Fair 1.5, and the auto gets a DNA 7. Uh, the card is much nicer looking than a Fair 1.5, but the back does have paper loss, with, which sort of automatically brings it down to that level. So really strong eye appeal for a 1.5, and again, the uh, auto gets a 7. Garrick, of course, passed away at a very young age, so his auto is not easy to come by. Sold for $30,325.20. I could not find a comp of this card in uh, uh, nothing even close, so I have no idea. Well, I guess this card's uh, fair market value is about thirty grand or so. The card's only been autographed on a thing and authenticated by PSA DNA two times in any grade. This is actually the higher of the two, the, the 1.5 here. The other one graded a PSA authentic. Number 5, 1925 Exhibits, a uh, near complete set. It's 126 of the 128 cards. Every card is graded by PSA. Uh, most of the cards are sort of mid-grade. Ty Cobb is a 5.5. Walter Johnson is a 4. And this is the number 3 ranked set on the PSA set registry at this, uh, at this moment in time. Pretty incredible uh, set to have put together. Sold for $33,434.40. Uh, no idea if this is, you know, fair market value if you were to consider sort of a breakup type of thing, but uh, the price strikes me as low. I would have thought, you know, off the top of my head that this would have gone higher, but again, I don't really have anything to, uh, to compare it to other than a gut instinct, which could very well be wrong here. Number four, 1933 Gaudi, number 211, Hack Wilson from our Blazer division. It's graded a PSA Mint 9 and... Uh, for those not familiar with Hack Wilson, he's probably most famous for owning the single-season RBI record. Still holds that record today when he had 191 RBIs in 1930 for your Chicago Cubs. Card is an absolute scorcher, as it better be, given that it's graded a PSA Mint 9. Nothing to, uh, to point out on the front. Back is maybe a little bit off-centered, left to right. Sold for $36,349.20. This is Wilson's first ever appearance on a High Rollers Top 10 list, Welcome Hack. This is the second highest ever sale of this card in any grade ever. Uh, P another PSA 9 sold a little over a year ago for 45000 but this is the second highest ever sale behind that one. The card here is a PSA Pop 6, and there are no copies graded higher. Number 3, 1952 tops. Number 261. Willie Mays, second year card of the Say Hey Kid. It's graded PSA near mint seven, very sharp. But the most notable thing is that it's got a bit of a, a slant cut. If 
you take a look at say the right border you can see it's a little bit thicker down at the bottom than uh, than at the top that's really the only thing uh, I, I, that point jumps out to me as an issue with the card back sort of has the same sort of slant cut going on but everything else looks very clean and sharp sold for forty two thousand six hundred and seventy two dollars uh, the sales is right where it should be as average of the last six sales is uh, 40 forty three thousand so like I said the sale lands right where you would expect the card is a PSA pop 102 and there are 72 copies graded higher including one PSA 10 that has never been put up for sale number two 1915 Cracker Jack complete set 176 cards in the set a few of the cards are from 1914 but the majority are 1915 this is from the Barry Halper collection I'm not familiar with that but it is listed in the title so I imagine is uh, is very relevant now unfortunately the cards are all glued to a scrapbook so all the cards are gonna have major major back damage of course PSA uh, authentics or PSA ones if you were to get them all graded but this is a very very rare set features a lot of key cards Ty Cobb shoeless Joe Jackson Christy Matthews and Walter Johnson and uh, and many others this set sold for hundred and two thousand six hundred and ninety three dollars and sixty cents uh, no comparable sales not, nothing even close to go off of but yeah six figures for this uh, set certainly certainly uh, doesn't strike me as anything weird about that and number one another exhibits Lou Gehrig 1925 exhibits Lou Gehrig rookie graded a PSA VGEX plus 4.5 this is his very first card in uh, that exists 1925 and from the pictures 4.5 looks extremely undergraded I'm, I'm sure there's something that the pictures aren't picking up but very very sharp all around on the front and the back looks extremely clean and sharp as well but again probably something there the pictures are not picking up this sold for three hundred and eighty seven thousand two hundred and fifty six dollars and eighty cents uh, there has not been a sale of a 4.5 ever before uh, some recent sales of the card in other grades recently uh, earlier this year actually a PSA 2.5 went for hundred and twenty six thousand and about a year and a half ago a PSA 5 went for just over one million so uh, you know, compared to those two sales or at least compared to the PSA 5 I would say this this price seems a little bit uh, a little bit on the low side it is a PSA pop 1 in fact and there are only seven copies graded higher the highest grade ever given out is a PSA 6 there are two copies of a PSA 6 is in existence there was in fact a, a sale of a PSA 6 it was all the way back in 2012 when it went for fourteen thousand dollars But that's it. Your top 10 this week featured two Lou Gehrig and one each of Willie Mays, Mickey Mantle, Tom Brady, Joe Namath, three different uh, complete sets from Exhibit Swell and Cracker Jack, and newcomer Hack Wilson. Thank you everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Tomorrow is regular rollers, and we will see you all again real soon. Thanks everyone.